You are listening to I Am Refocused Radio with your host, Shamaya Reed. This show is designed to inspire you to live your purpose and regain your focus. And now, here's your host, Shamaya Reed. Hey, welcome to I Am Refocused Radio. We are here once again. And today, man, we have another episode lined up for y'all. We're going to talk to a special guest, Heather Markell. And she's not just an international best-selling author. She's also a speaker and she's in business full-time doing travel and also a travel coach. I want to welcome you, Heather, to the show and say, how are you doing? Thank you. I'm doing great. How are you? All is well. So when it comes to traveling full-time, you help coach people and help them realize that they too can make this possible. You know, you have a website, heatherbegins.com. You have all these great resources, but you also have a story of how you got started. So tell the audience a little bit about yourself and what piqued your interest to being the traveling world business. Sure. Yeah. I uh, basically, I I help people kind of overcome the emotional, financial and logistical barriers to traveling full time. And I'm so inspired by what's happening because I quit my full-time corporate career of over 25 years in 2017, which was before the great resignation. And people thought I was crazy to quit and just go take a career break is what I thought to travel. Um, And then I would go back to real life. And I found that while I was traveling the world and speaking my languages and meeting great people that I was doing what I loved. And I didn't want to stop. (laughs) So I was like, why am I going back to a desk job? (laughs) So I would, I had kept my apartment at that time and I uh, looked at the rent and I was like, wow, that, that rent could buy me a lot more travel. So I, I just put some things in storage, got rid of the apartment and went all in, but you know, what led up to it. And I think the great resignation is such validation to me is, you know, I was just unhappy in a corporate job and it, it, I mean, my boss was really nice. My colleagues were great. I had benefits, you know, uh, it just, I just felt like there wasn't, I wasn't finding the, the meaning and fulfillment I wanted in my life in that job. And that job took up most of my time. And I felt like I was working for a paycheck and benefits and I had way too long to go till retirement. And I remember sitting at my desk feeling like there has got to be more meaning to life than rotting at this desk and waiting for retirement to enjoy my life. And when I felt a a pain in my chest at the beginning of 2017 and reflected back to another incident in my life where I where I had a pain in my neck because I wasn't dealing with the emotional circumstances in my life at that time. I remembered that that pain in my neck became two herniated discs, which were, that was the most excruciating pain I ever felt. And when I felt that pain in my chest in 2017, I said to myself, I am not turning this pain into some other health issue, which is a lot more serious. And that's when I committed to quit. And I'm so glad I did. And that was back in 2017, we made that decision. So you've been doing this for a little bit. It's not like you just started recently last year, but how was the process uh, transferring from a day job into basically calling your own shots? Yeah. So, you know, I, it was hard. I, I spent years knowing that I was in this corporate job and I belonged someplace else. And ironically, there was always this voice in my head saying, you know, you're meant to do something that doesn't exist yet. And I'm like, well, that doesn't help me because, <laughs> you know, I, I, how am I supposed to know what that is? And there was, I had to go through, and this is why I take people, people through this emotional process. Cause a lot of what happens is it's a problem of mindset, right? My heart was very clear. Like I want to do something else. I love traveling. Let's go. And my head was very clear. You can't possibly do that because how on earth are you going to afford that? And we need the paycheck. We need benefits. You got to, you know, pay your rent. You got to get to retirement. So there was that battle happening. And 
what happened over time, um, and like I said, once I made that commitment after years of not stepping up, when I that voice of doubt came in my head, my head and my heart started working together. So when the voice came in that said, you know, what if you ruin your career? The, the response in my, from this other part of me became, what if you have an even better career? <laughs> you know, what if you run out of money? And the voice was like, what if you have more money than you could have imagined? So there was this working together that started to happen that was the first time I ever experienced that. And so in 2017, I, you know, I started the year by committing to quit that year. And I decided that if I was really going to do it, I needed to set myself some challenges throughout the year to see if I really meant it. And I allowed the challenges to appear and take them. So there were three specific challenges that happened that year and I stepped up to each of them. And once I did and I came away, they didn't work out exactly as I had you know, hoped or planned all the time, but but I got through them. And so I finally confronted like that, you know, that end of that year, I was able to speak to my manager and say, you know, I'm out. And it was actually the most anticlimactic discussion. I was really surprised, <laughs> but, you know, it was just a blend of faith in myself and stepping up to challenges and, and just doing it. So you planned this out. You didn't just cold turkey one day, woke up and say, Hey, I'm done. You, you actually thought this through before you made a jump. Absolutely. And, and I should also preface that by saying I did spend um, a year of, you know, the, the several years that I wanted to do this, I saved up a huge nest egg. Um, so I saved up a lot of money and uh, was, yeah, so I absolutely kind of earmarked it for that, you know, and it was like a process over time of building up the money and building up the faith and looking at all of the mindset issues that were keeping me from doing what I wanted to do and addressing each fear one by one until I ran out of excuses. And, and instead I just had nothing to do, but go. And since 2018, you've been to many, many different countries. Yes. What have, as far as your experience, what has been some of your favorite spots that you have been able to visit and why? Yes. It's funny. A lot of people ask me that. And it's hard to pick favorites because, you know, every country is a favorite depending on people I've met, experiences I've had, beautiful scenery. Uh, so uh, some of the highlights I'd say, especially because I, as someone that took corporate vacation travel, which is a week or two, which meant I felt very limited in how far I could go because of jet lag and all, and, you know, flight times and durations. Uh, when I got to South America and Africa for the first time, uh, that blew my mind. So places like Argentina, Peru, um, and then getting to uh, like South Africa, Namibia, um, were just, you know, just to see a world that was so different from the worlds that I had experienced and the warmth of the people that I met and the different languages. And I love learning new languages. So when I was in Africa, I tried to learn a little of the uh, Hosa, I think it's called Hosa. It's hard to say, uh, the clicking language. And, uh, you know, and I met a lot of people from like Zimbabwe and uh, I tried to learn a little bit of Afrikaans and, you know, so it just sort of, it's like a blend of, of that. And then of course, I just returned recently from being marooned in New Zealand for two years during the pandemic. So New Zealand is also a highlight just because, I mean, of, of all the life experiences I've had, I'm sure I'll never forget that. Like, wow, there was a pandemic. I was so lucky of all the places in the world to end up to be in New Zealand and to have my visa extended and allowed to stay in a country for two years without going through the process of having a spouse or a job in New Zealand and being allowed to stay that long, I, I doubt we'll ever see that again. <laughs> well, people listen to this right now, uh, by the way, we're talking to Heather and Mark Hale on Ivy Focus Radio. They're gonna ask you, how in the world were you able to afford that? Yeah. And how are you able to afford, period, be able to travel full time? Absolutely. That's the number one question I'm asked. 
So, you know, New Zealand was a special situation. It was just really weird. Um, so first off, luckily, so I checked with their immigration and they said as long as my business activities where I was paid into my U.S. bank account where I paid taxes, that that was okay, but I couldn't solicit business in New Zealand. But um, so I was able to, to continue some of my work endeavors and that combined with, I mean, there were months at a time I made beautiful friends who took me in for way too long. <laughs> so there were months at a time where I didn't have to pay rent because I was staying with friends. I did a lot of house sitting. <laughs> um, so, you know, that chopped out, but basically I chopped down my budget. And when I did, I also stayed in one place for so long that I was able to also negotiate lower rent. So um, those are some of the ways that I afforded New Zealand. And typically when I travel also, it's a blend of like many savings and um, spending strategies that I teach. And also I have uh, points, you know, for flights and hotel stays when I need them. So um, kind of using, <laughs> like I said, there's just so many different strategies that I blend together depending on where I am to be able to afford um, where I'm at. And on your website, or do you have um, resources that help make another revenue for you as well? Another stream of income? I, I do. So, you know, a lot of my, my coaching services are there. And then I sell um, various programs depending on, you know, whether you want to just kind of get your feet wet and just kind of get an ebook and sort of see what, um, like getting some formulas to help you, whether you want to invest in a, a program where, you know, you can self-study and learn, you know, what it's like and some of the, the mindset shifts that happen when you leave corporate and you go travel full-time and work differently, or whether you want some of the, like the, just the in-depth strategies that I teach, or if you want to coach one-on-one, -on -one, all of that is there on my work with me page. And with those strategies, do you give people tips on how to work around a actual budget in order for them to do this without being stressed out. Completely. Yeah. Yeah. So actually I just created a free training um, that's called how to afford full-time travel on any budget. So, you know, just give it, you know, it's funny. A lot of people look at this lifestyle as something that you have to be one, you have to be independently wealthy. And to be honest, the only reason you would need to be wealthy to live this lifestyle is if you plan to do it, by traveling in first class and staying at a Ritz Carlton all the time. If that's what you want, yeah, you better be really wealthy. <laughs> um, but uh, so, so because I think people have this idea in their head and they confuse vacation travel with full-time travel. So if all you've ever done in your life is take vacations when you've traveled, you naturally will think, well, I can't afford full-time travel because wow, one week's vacation, I blow through several thousand dollars. I can't do that. Yeah. Well, full-time travel is not a vacation. So uh, most the, so with those ideas in their mind, what they don't do is actually look at the budget. And so I've worked with people who are like, oh gosh, like I never even bothered. Like I, I thought this was a dream. So I never even bothered to take that first step of researching, well, how much would this cost? Can I do it? Um, and so really I'm opening people's eyes to the fact that this is completely doable and, but you, you do have to look at it. You just have to do, take some simple steps around budget, around money. And, and just that easy step will allow you to see like, Oh, huh. Well, I think I actually can do it. And then from there, your confidence will grow. And with the services that you provide with your coaching, was some of the things that you found is the most popular question that people seem to have when they're new to this? Well, like I said, the number one question I always find is how am I going to afford it? Uh, so, and, and other questions. So, so I'm a solo traveler. Uh, so other solo travelers worry about, you know, what, will I be lonely? Um, what about solo traveling, tra solo traveler safety? Um, so going into some of that stuff, but, you know, usually it's, 
um, it's money, it's uh, talking about, you know, logistics, like, you know, it's like I said, vacation travel, you go away for a week. So you book your round trip flight, you book some hotels and some tours and you're gone. Well, now you're going to be doing that all the time. So what's that like, right? So going through, um, you know, how, what are the best ways to handle the planning? Um, plus, if you're coming from a corporate career into full-time travel and you're used to one or two week breaks, um, that there's that wall that you will tend to hit at about the two week mark, you know? So it's like, well, how do you deal with, uh, when, you know, I, I, I've now understood full-time travel is my life. I'm actually not returning to my desk job. <laughs> so, you know, what do I, what do I do now? Um, and some other questions are, you know, especially like in the world of remote work, because the, the cool thing that the great resignation has done, which wasn't available as an option when I quit, is you can also keep your job and travel. So talk about, you know, how can you afford full-time travel? Well, you don't have to quit your day job anymore. <laughs> so if you're working for a company that is open to that remote work world, um, that, that bridges that gap, but then you still have the problem of, you know, time zones. How am I going to, um, how am I still going to handle the logistics of travel? And a lot of people also ask about visas and how am I, how am I doing that? What, you know, what am I, how am I dealing with immigration? And also a huge question is always packing. <laughs> so those are some of my biggest questions that I get. And once again, listen to Irie Focus Radio talking to Heather Markell. When you are traveling and visit these places, do you, I'm sure you take a lot of pictures, but do yes. you write blog posts and descriptions about, you know, what you're experiencing at that moment? I do. So, uh, so I have a blog at heatherbegins.com and that has become a kind of combination of descriptive blog posts of the places I've been, as well as advice on full-time travel. And I also write for uh, a company called Travel Await. So I also have done a lot of my um, travel articles there. And um, I even got published in the New Zealand Herald while I was there about um, being marooned there. So yeah, I do a lot of writing about the places I go and um, I have a lot of pictures. It's just crazy. <laughs> so you obviously are an expert at this and people are looking towards your expertise with this topic of traveling. Are you seeing people growing with their experience as far as like once they have connected with you and over time they have the courage to do this themselves? Have you been able to see people grow with their experience in traveling? Yes. I mean, first off, just the just the initial experience with the client when there's that, oh my God, I can actually do this. And looking at the shift when they first come in, like, how on earth will I do this? To when they leave and it's like, got it. And then it's like they're grounded and they have a plan and it's real. So that is an amazing growth that I have seen. Um, but also as people travel, and this is something that I think is uh, not unique, right? Like we all go through the personal growth because you know travel naturally will, and especially full-time travel will push you outside your comfort zone. And when you're looking for meaning and purpose in your life, I mean, the way I see it is, especially for those of, you know, your listeners that might be also kind of mid-career or midlife, there are not a lot, the resources we tend to have, right, when we, when we reach midlife and are sort of like, well, or maybe you've reached here earlier where you've, you're looking around and you're realizing, huh, I don't think I'm where I want to be and doing what I want to do. That gets labeled a crisis, midlife crisis or whatever age group you are. And the, the recourse for that is to go to therapy or take medication. I don't, I don't know if anything else our society really um, prescribes for dealing with that. And I think that's bogus. And I think everyone should invest in nomadic living for a period of time, at least, because it puts you so deeply in touch with who you are and who you want to be in a much quicker time frame. And it causes you to look at what really matters because while you're out there in the world, you're seeing how differently other people live. 
and you're comparing it to how you live and you're realizing either how lucky you are or how you w- would rather live differently um, and you're meeting your own resourcefulness, you're meeting yourself and challenging yourself to look at parts of yourself you might not like and how to grow into someone you do like. So all of those things are parts of the transition that are beautiful to watch people go through. And here's a question that I would definitely want to ask, and that is, what about food? How do you <laughs> strategy, like what's your strategy? How do you strategize, like where are you going to shop and what are you going to eat and planning that out? Because I, I, I can think it might be a little easy, but at the same time, who knows, yeah. is it? <laughs> So, I mean, food is different everywhere you go. When I was in Costa Rica, which was where I started traveling um, in 2018, at that time, uh, I would eat most meals in what's called a soda, like a can of soda, but the soda is a family run eatery. They're all different in their own way, but essentially they all would have like a sort of general plate for each meal um, that was $5 US. So for me, like, I'm lucky that I'm quite adventurous with food. Like when I was in Africa, I ate, I don't even know, I ate warthog, I ate ostrich, I ate kudu, like stuff I've never heard of. So I'll try pretty much anything. So if you're willing to be brave, right, you might find some less expensive foods in terms of, uh, so, so like Costa Rica was a place where it was fairly easy to eat on $15 a day. Um, New Zealand (laughs) <laughs> is crazy. And, you know, definitely grocery shopping and, uh, you know, making meals that are as, as a solo traveler, you know, that that can last a bit and thinking about um, what kind of food like cabbage, for example, will last, a, you know, a fairly, a fairly decent amount of time to keep reusing. Um, and remembering New Zealand, like no other place in the world, put me in touch with how wasteful we are, especially in America, or at least how I ha- wasteful I have been. And so creating leftovers and then making sure that you eat those leftovers and maybe mix them with a new ingredient so that doesn't feel like totally boring. So um, I think, you, you know, if you, if you get less expensive foods that last for a while into your stock, And, you know, you kind of have your base foods, whether that be pasta or grains or whatever that is for you, um, and kind of mix in other things and have leftovers, then, you know, that's a great strategy for food. So you, do you avoid getting the easy frozen TV dinners? You kind of explore a little bit? (laughs) Yeah. I mean, so the way I've been traveling to is typically, uh, so, so everybody does this differently, but, but I'm someone that will travel. I started out by traveling every like three days, which now seem, to me seems really fast. Meaning I would go to a country for longer, but I might change city every three days. Um, and now I tend to stay like a week or so, or maybe longer um, in a place. So, you know, that means that, yeah, you can get groceries, but what you have to remember is that as a full-time traveler, you're moving all the time and you're carrying your own bag. So it's not like you can easily carry a bottle of olive oil and salt and pepper and you know all those sort of base ingredients you need. So it does become a, a bit of a game between like what's less expensive. Am, am I going to save money eating out? Should I invest in a small bottle of olive oil and the salt and the pepper and just carry that with me from place to place and you know stay in a hostel and cook there? Um, so it it depends where you are. Like again, New Zealand being so expensive is definitely a place that I would advise you're cooking as many of your own meals as you can, because it's just so expensive, even the grocery store. But, and, and actually I found like in New Zealand, when I wanted to eat a meal out, sushi happened to be much more of a bargain than other things because their sushi is in the, it's like a refrigerator and each piece you want is marked with a price. So if you have a budget, You can easily just grab a few pieces that are within your budget. You may be a little hungry because, you know, it's not like a huge meal, but you know what, like if you can deal with that, then you just eat something in your budget. That's a small meal and you're still eating. So that's great. Um, But other countries where depending on the currency you're traveling with, 
you your money may go farther and you may be able to it may be less expensive for you to eat in a restaurant get a big meal get it get it to go box um hopefully you have a refrigerator where you're staying and then you can eat that meal twice so now your five or ten dollars us has bought you two meals instead of just one that sounds like you're busy too uh do you have time to or how should i say this do you how do you find time to settle down and also enjoy the process of traveling? Because you still got to survive and do some work. Yes. But how do you keep that balance to where you're working so you can keep doing this, but at the same time, you have fun? Yeah. And so that's such a great question because um, there's definitely, you, you know, I, I think the, the preconceived notion of full-time travel is it's a full-time vacation. And you know what, there are people that definitely uh, are, if, you know, towards retirement um, age or just, you know, have, that's how they want to live. They're, they're traveling in a way that they can just travel and full-time do nothing else. Um, I find that I actually enjoy blogging. I enjoy doing things and I want to make income, right? So, so it is important to um, look at, first off, you have to be compassionate with yourself, especially when you're changing time zones. It's like, Oh my gosh, New Zealand was really hard for me because it wasn't just a time zone change. It was a day change. So I had to remember like a formula to trick my mind into knowing like, oh gosh, if I'm talking to people from home, rather than looking at this as an 18 hour time difference, let me look at it as like a six hour time difference, but it, I'm a day ahead. <laughs> so, um, so that was confusing, but so because ideally you're, you're plotting out, I mean, look, every one of us is different. I would I would suggest if you have a calendar, you make sure to knock off some days or pieces of a day to enjoy yourself. So you're doing some work, but you want, cause I can get easily, you know, into a blog post or work that I'm doing. And all of a sudden the whole day is gone because I like it. So, you know, for me, I have to just remind myself, like, go like block out this time and go. And so that might mean, you know, if I'm meeting with clients, I have specific days that are client days and then um, other days that are free time days. And especially if I'm somewhere for a brief amount of time, I might mark off the whole time as my time so that, you know, and I also have article deadlines that I, you know, for the company that I write for. So, um, so it's really a process that may change in the moment, depending how long I'm staying somewhere and what my time zone difference is with the deadlines that I have um, and just figuring it out. I've learned to be very much in the flow and in the moment and figuring out what works best. Well, once again, talking to the one and only Heather Markell and man, time always goes by fast when you're having fun, <laughs> Yep. but you're also, uh, believe it or not, active on social media. You have time to post. Um, what are some of the things people can expect when they follow you as you kind of show the world your experience traveling? So on Instagram, I try to share and I'm behind on Instagram. I'm trying to catch up, but um, I try to share because I love photography. So I just try to share um, snippets of my travels. Um, I I love it because, you know, when I, especially when I was marooned in New Zealand, as, as lucky as I was, and I wasn't, you know, in my home country. So it was kind of like I was still traveling. Um, it was so lovely to be able to scroll through all of my photos from like so many countries and just remember all the beautiful experiences I've had. So, so Instagram is a nice like diary, if you will, of all of those experiences. And, you know, if you come to my blog, um, as I mentioned, you'd have, uh, information country specific and city specific blog posts as well as if you want to get into full-time travel a lot of guidance and advice around that um, and on Facebook I tend to share I've, I've been doing a lot of um, podcast interviews and um, I tend to share like the podcast interviews as well as on my personal profile sometimes I'll share a funny um, moment or an interesting day or interesting experience that I'm having someplace um, and I have a Facebook group for people that are traveling full-time or want to travel full-time. So there's lots of like information and resources in there as well. Man, I mean, you made it sound easy and it looks easy, but I know it's not that easy. It so, is not easy. No. <laughs> <laughs> you, 
you also, before we go, you have a book that you co-authored. Uh, can you tell us the name of the book and what that's about? Yes, it's called Voices of the 21st Century, Conscious Caring Women Who Make a Difference. And we went international bestseller, um, which was great. And it's a beautiful book. Um, there are 50 women from around the world who shared their amazing stories. And um, my story in there is about my reasoning for quitting corporate and what it was like to, you know, the decision to follow my heart and the impact on my life of doing it. So it's a great book. And if you're looking for something inspirational or a gift for people, um, I, it's available on my website as well as on Amazon. Man, I mean, you're definitely certified to talk about this topic, heatherbegins.com. Uh, what's anything else you want to share with our audience before we sign off? I would just encourage you if you are someone who, you know, look, the great resignation is here, whether you want to leave your job or take your job with you, um, travel is such a rewarding experience. And if you are someone that you're listening to this and you really want to do it, but you just don't know how, um, I would say reach out, please. I'm happy to, to talk to you, but also know that it, it is possible and um, just take that first step and to be willing to look at, you know, how to create that budget for yourself and you will be well on your way to making this full-time travel a reality. Well, once again, I've been talking to Heather Markell. You can go to her website, heatherbegins.com. And also pick up the books you co-authored, Voices of the 21st Century. I want to say thanks to Heather for uh, taking time out uh, your busy schedule talking to I Am Refocus Radio today. Thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure speaking with you. I Am Refocus Radio is brought to you by FOO 4 Star and Holy Crab. FOO 4 Star is a family-owned Asian restaurant in San Antonio, Texas. We have been a local favorite for Asian cuisine for over 10 years. With nothing but full smiles and fast service, you'll be leaving satisfied. Come on in for some authentic Vietnamese food. Holy Crab is one of a kind Cajun Creole style seafood restaurant located in Universal City, Texas. We offer traditional seafood items as well as chicken and steak. We also offer seafood boils. Come give us a try, you won't be disappointed. You can find these two eateries in Universal City, Texas at 2921 Pat Booker Road.